This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And this one's a pretty small one. It apparently turns on, but does not show a picture, which can be an extremely annoying thing to diagnose. For a bit of context, this bill was put together only a few weeks ago, which makes this, at least in my eyes, a brand new PC. The only recycled component is the case, which is an Origin PC case, but everything else in here is, again, virtually brand new, purchased from either Amazon or Newegg. Now, the issue arises when it comes to the return policy window, especially with Amazon. I believe for most tech products, it's only 14 days. So if you've owned a product for more than 14 days and you find out that it's not working, well, that return window, usually your SOL. Amazon has made some exceptions, including for me, but most of the time, you're not gonna be able to get your money back, at least from Amazon. They're gonna tell you to go through the manufacturer. And the other problem with that is that going through a manufacturer takes usually weeks, sometimes even months. And nobody wants to deal with that, especially in a new build that you just spent a pretty penny for. So that is why this thing is here. And I'm really hoping we're gonna be able to figure out what's wrong with it so that we can fix it in the studio and give it back to the owner within a day or two versus, right, several weeks. I think I'd choose the former. So without further ado, let's get into it. Stay with me. If you're having trouble remembering dozens of passwords for accounts that seem to always require new ones, and I know they do this for security reasons, but still it does become overwhelming when you have like dozens of different passwords for different accounts, you should check out RoboForm, a secure password manager. Not only will it store all of your passwords, it'll log you into each account with one click. No more typing, especially those long passwords. This also means you can use super unique ones for each account without the hassle of memorizing or jotting them down. That's RoboForm's job. It's peace of mind and backed by industry standard encryption. RoboForm is super easy to get started and you can have it up and running within a few minutes. And if you sign up using our special link, you'll get 30% off a RoboForm Everywhere subscription. That's just 16 bucks a year. So click the link below or visit roboform.com forward slash Greg Salazar to get started today. So let's first reveal what is in the box. Ooh. Yeah, no discrete graphics card. So the specs of this build are AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, which explains lack of a discrete card, uh, 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance, 3200 megahertz DDR4, a 240 gig MP510 NVMe SSD, and a 750 watt Corsair SFX power supply. Now, the fact that this has a 5600G in here and he's saying that he's not getting picture out but the system boots up just fine, that tells me a heck of a lot about what I think this is. I think it's a BIOS compatibility issue. See, a lot of these AMD motherboards, especially older ones, but even newer ones that are reliant on B550 and X570 chipsets, don't include native 5000 series AMD APU support, at least not natively. So if you went to amazon.com or maybe a big box retailer like Micro Center and bought yourself a pretty modern B550 motherboard, you would assume that it would work with one of AMD's more modern CPUs, right? Like the 5000 series APU. So 5600G should work with the B550 motherboard out of the box but it doesn't and it's because these motherboards a lot of them were manufactured long before these APUs were ever even announced so you need to update your motherboards BIOS in most cases to get it to work and post with one of these modern APUs and I've got a good feeling this individual did not do that not that I really blame him because again you would assume that these two would just work they would just be compatible by default uh, but one of the downsides one of the only downsides really of recycling the same platform the same socket AM4 over and over and over is that they don't just, you know, things just don't work right away. Usually you have to have a CPU that's already compatible with the BIOS in the board to, to post, to get into your BIOS, and then you need to update your BIOS that way, right? Some boards have what you'd call a BIOS flashback function, which we have a video talking about. I'm gonna have that linked in the video description if you're interested. It shows you how to update your motherboard's BIOS without having an already compatible CPU in the socket. The unfortunate, situation here is that this motherboard doesn't appear to have a BIOS flashback function. At least I don't see anything back here that indicates it does have that function. So we're gonna have to swap the APU in here out with another older CPU that I know works natively and then we'll update the BIOS that way. I'm going through all this up front because I have a really, really good feeling that is the only thing wrong with this build. And the fact that everything else is new, I mean, there's, no, there's nothing really to warrant the, uh, me to suspect that something terrible is wrong with this build, apart from just simple software incompatibility that is very easy to fix if you have an older CPU. First thing we're gonna do though, before we try anything, is turn it on and see if we get the same symptoms exhibited that the viewer described. So with the PC powered and our portable monitor connected, we're gonna try to turn the system on. I believe, it's that button there. 
This board does not have a Dr. Debug or anything of that sort. You might have some LED indicators on here. Actually, I don't see that either. This is um, a more bare bones B550 ITX board here. So yeah, this is the typical, this is the typical symptom of an incompatible BIOS. Everything appears to be working, all the fans are spinning, but we're getting no picture. Now at this point, there are a few things we could try. We could swap the motherboard out, but that doesn't really solve our, our problem. At the end of the day, we need to get this BIOS updated and we can't do that by removing the board. What we should be doing is swapping CPUs. And I have a 3400G here. This is a generation old APU that I think works with this B550 board. It still depends on the BIOS, but I'm pretty sure it supports these. If it doesn't, worst case, we can swap it with a 3600, which I have in the closet. Uh, that will work out of the box with any B550 board, at least it should. And then we'll have to throw in a cheap discrete card. At least then we can power the system on, we'll get a picture, we'll get a post, and then we can update the BIOS that way. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's no native BIOS flashback function included with this motherboard. So we have no choice but to swap it out with a compatible CPU or a dud you could get direct from AMD, but that takes a few weeks. Now, of course, the less likely scenario here is that the CPU is DOA. I highly doubt that, uh, but if it is, we'd still need to swap these chips out to confirm that. Um, again, my initial impression with this system is that all that is needed is a BIOS update. And that is uh, relatively straightforward, assuming you have an already compatible CPU on hand. So we're gonna remove the 5600G. We've already cleaned off the thermal paste and we're gonna insert the 3400G. And instead of using thermal paste for this, since we're just swapping these out very quickly, I'm just gonna use a thermal pad. This actually isn't even the correct size, uh, but it should still pull enough heat away. I'm not worried at all about thermal throttling. Ask me how I know. And with that taken care of, I think it's time to try for a post. I do expect this will work now. If it doesn't, then it's probably just the BIOS still. <laughs> I didn't check to see what this uh, motherboard shipped with. Oh, there we go. Well, that was super easy. <laughs> so it was definitely a BIOS issue. I, I'm almost certain that it's not the CPU itself. Most CPUs aren't just randomly gonna die on you. Um, so yeah, uh, and there you go. So P1.00, that's the BIOS version. Definitely not the correct BIOS for the 5600G. And a very easy way to take care of this is to first hop on your motherboard's product page. So you can see this is our board, B550M-ITX slash AC. We can confirm this in our BIOS. You wanna scroll down here to the support tab, click here, and then we'll wanna click on the BIOS button. You can see these are all the available BIOSes for this board, starting with the most recent here at the top. And you can see under all three of these updates, it says to support 5000 series G processors, it requires to update the BIOS with Matisse, Renoir, or Vermeer. Um, okay, I just realized something. So we just installed what I believe is a Picasso APU. I get all my code names mixed up. Matisse is, the generic 3000 series Zen 2 processors. Renoir is, I believe, the 4000 series G APUs, and Vermeer is the 5000 series Zen 3 CPUs, not the APUs. So I think why it's telling us that we have to have one of these three installed is because when we do flash this BIOS, we're gonna lose support for the APU that's already in there, the 3400G which isn't good because you don't want anything to happen to your system while you're flashing a BIOS that you could break your board. I really didn't think about that very much. I'm gonna leave all this in the video, of course, so that you can kind of learn from my mistakes and, and, and look ahead before swapping the CPUs out. I would have just put a 3600 in here if I had known that it was gonna erase support for the 3400G once we flashed it. But, um, but the reason why they do this is because you can only fit so many compatible CPUs and APUs into a, a, a BIOS package. Um, and, and the memory chips for these BIOSes are really small. So every time you include support for one set of processors, you typically have to eliminate support for another. And our poor 3400G is not gonna be supported on any of these three BIOSes here. Whether it be 1.8, 1.7, or 1.6, all three of these require at the very earliest Matisse and our poor Picasso APU is just, um, yeah, it's not quite Matisse. So I'm gonna download version 1.8, save that to a thumb drive. It does include 5000 series G support uh, and it does include a few Agasa updates and things for better stability, but I'll have that on a thumb drive and we'll swap the CPU in here out for a 3600 or 3600X. We'll have to put a discrete card in the system. I know this is kind of annoying, but this is what, it's the way you have to deal with if you want 
you know, AM4 to work with all these different CPUs, which is good in a lot of ways, but this is the one downside. Uh, and then, uh, then we'll be able to throw his 5600G back in here and hopefully get a post. Right, so now we've got a 3600 in here, which remember has no integrated graphics processor. So that's why we had to also throw in a GT710, which is just a, a very cheap graphics card. I wouldn't recommend gaming with it, but uh, it does allow us to get a picture out and we should see a post again. I don't know why we wouldn't. I've confirmed that both of these things work in separate systems. Uh, if we do see that post, then we'll be able to update our BIOS. With this uh, 3600 install, we'll still have support for the 3600 after the BIOS has been flashed, and then we'll be able to swap this chip for his 5600G. Any second now. There we go. What does that say? Oh, new, new CPU, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's get into the BIOS. And just like that, with a little time lapse, our BIOS was updated and after a restart, we got this screen right here, which indicates that there's no operating system on the drive in here. And that makes sense because he just built this system according to what he told me and didn't get a post from day one or didn't get a picture at least. So uh, yeah, he couldn't of course install an operating system if he couldn't see what he was doing on screen. Uh, with that now, I'm going to swap the 3600 in here with the 5600G. We're gonna take the discrete processor out and we're gonna attempt to get a post with a picture this time. I, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure this is gonna work. In fact, the only reason this wouldn't work is if the CPU is actually dead and it was just a coincidence that the BIOS was also incompatible with the chip. I highly doubt that, but it is, I guess, a slight possibility. So let's drop the APU in here. I'll reapply thermal paste since that's what he had to begin with. We'll do our X pattern with a few dots and just... Lock it in place. We'll remove this graphics card. Say bye-bye, GT710. You are not needed. And let's try for one last post. HDMI cable connected to the back of the motherboard. Power cable connected. Let's cross our fingers. It's doing its old power cycling thing, trying to train memory and the like. Any second now. I'm gonna look really stupid if this was not the fix. Come on. Come on, you'll get there. I'm rooting for you. Picture, picture, picture. Oh yeah, that's a post. There we go, now you can see our same board, B550M ITX slash AC. We're now on P1.8 instead of 1.00, and our Ryzen 5 5600G with Radeon graphics is good to go. And now that this build is functionally good to go, I do want to address a few aesthetic issues, if you want to call them that. Cable management is a bit lacking. There's a few cables just kind of running all across the motherboard and like it looks a little messy. So I'm gonna try my best to clean that up. This case is rather limiting in that aspect because there's not a ton of space at all behind the motherboard tray. So I think we'll still have a bulk of our cables sitting right here under the power supply. But uh, I do think we can clean it up just a bit. So let's give it a shot. And here we are. You know, while I was in the middle of <laughs> filming all this, I realized that his left side panel is actually not even like windowed. It's, it's, it's perforated, but you can't actually see in here. So not that huge deal that his cable management looked the way it did. Honestly, could have been just fine the way I left it, but I did change a few things. I streamlined the cables uh, so that it looks a little cleaner. I swapped the power supply around so that it was pulling in air from the left, because again, the left side is perforated. Granted, the right side is too, but um, this just helped with cable management a bit more as well. So now I've got two fans facing kind of inward, which will look pretty cool. We've got an exhaust fan up top and a smaller exhaust here at the rear. All of that air for the most part, again, is gonna be pulled in from the side. So a uh, pretty cool layout. I did confirm after doing all of this that the system still posts. Uh, the only thing he needs to install now is an operating system. And because there wasn't one already on here, because again, he, he couldn't have possibly installed one unless he was bringing a drive that already had Windows over to this new system uh, because he couldn't get a picture. So I'm not going to install Windows on here just because I'm not entirely sure 
and what he's going to want to do with it. But um, that said, everything else is ready to go. The system is working now, and it ultimately just came down to lack of a BIOS update. That's one of the things you should really look out for when building an AMD PC in 2021. One of the side effects of having a platform that is so versatile and so inclusive is that you're going to have plenty of BIOSes out there that uh, frankly overlap with each other in terms of CPU compatibility. My rule of thumb is to always check the manufacturer's website, always check uh, e-retailer listings like Amazon and Newegg, read the descriptions, double and triple check that the motherboard you're buying is compatible out of the box with the CPU you intend to pair it with. Otherwise, you'll end up in the situation we were in here where your build is otherwise fully functional, but you get no picture, you get no post. It's because the BIOS is more than likely not compatible with the CPU you paired it with. And this is mainly an AMD thing. There were a few instances where you could have this situation occur with uh, Intel, but mostly AMD. And again, it's, it's more or less a consequence of just how versatile AM4 is. So there's a plethora of benefits associated with that. Obviously, you can use B350 boards with some of the latest AMD CPUs out there. And then they were released like three or four years apart. That's really cool. The downside is, well, you can only fit so many different CPUs or you can only support so many different CPUs uh, in a given BIOS. And uh, as a result of that, you'll need to do a bit of flashing sometimes to get this stuff to work. But uh, not to worry, this viewer system is now good to go. And I'm glad we were able to help him in this video. With that, if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. If you have not subscribed yet, I don't know what you're doing. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. Go ahead, I'll give you a few seconds. Cool, and uh, leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see next here on the channel. My name is Greg, thanks for troubleshooting with me.